Hello and welcome back to Dental Basics. I'm Dr. Parvati Raghavan and in this topic about oral mucous membrane, we are going to learn its histology, types, difference between keratinized and non-keratinized epithelium and also find what are rate ridges and connective tissue papillae. Membrane is a layer of cells or a thin sheet of tissue that forms a boundary, a lining or a partition. Mucus is a slimy substance and is of two types, water soluble like that found in the oral cavity and water insoluble found in the mucosal surfaces of the stomach and duodenum. Mucus is rich in mucin, which is a high molecular weight glycosylated protein, that is it has carbohydrate attached to a functional group. The major substance secreted by the membrane is mucus and so it is called as mucus membrane. Mucous membrane lines many tracts throughout our body, like the respiratory tract, trachea, lungs, etc., GI tract, which includes stomach, small intestines, large intestines, etc., urinary tract, including ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra. It also lines many structures throughout our body, like eyes, nose, and mouth. Mucous membrane function to protect and lubricate. They track particles and pathogen preventing their entry into deeper tissues. They lubricate and keep the underlying tissues moist. All mucous membranes that are found throughout our body are made of 1. a surface layer of epithelial cells and 2. a deeper layer of connective tissue named lamina propria. The lamina propria is a thin layer of connective tissue Lamina means layer and propria means one's own character. This connective tissue has its special characteristic feature. The epithelium of all mucous membranes throughout our body need to be tough enough to endure abrasion, wear and tear and consists of either stratified squamous epithelium with multiple layers of epithelial cells, the top layer being flattened or simple colna epithelium a layer of column-shaped epithelial cells, the cells being greater in height than width. Epithelium also contains some special cells for absorption and secretion, like the epithelium in the GIT or the respiratory tract. The epithelium and connective tissue of the oral mucous membrane is a little bit different. 1. The epithelial cells are made of stratified squamous type of cells. The word squamous is from the Latin word squama meaning the scales of a fish. 2 is the basement membrane. It is made of dense reticular fibers. Reticular means a network of fibers. It links the epithelium and the connective tissue and is not a separation between the two tissues. 3. Lamina propria which is thin, vascular, loose and rich in cells. 4 is submucosa. It is looser than lamina propria and is of varying thickness. It contains large arteries, veins, fat tissue, minor salivary glands and nerve fibers. It is seen in vestibule and the floor of the mouth. Oral mucosa is of three types, the masticatory mucosa, the lining mucosa and specialized mucosa, forming 25%, 15% and 60% of the total surface area. When we chew food with our teeth, the heart palate, gingiva and the dorsum of the tongue take most of the impact of the food being crushed by the forces of mastication. These are called the masticatory mucosa. Other areas in our mouth like lips, cheeks, soft palate, vestibule, floor of the mouth and inferior surface of the tongue are subject to lesser forces while eating and are called the lining mucosa. The dorsum of the tongue has special structures, the taste buds, so it is also called specialized mucosa. It is a masticatory mucosa that is specialized. Histologically, the masticatory and lining mucosa are very similar. Both are made of stratified squamous epithelium. Stratified means arranged in layers. At the bottom is a single layer of cuboidal cells which forms the basal layer. Above this are a few layers of polyhedral cells called the prickle layer, then two to three layers of granular cells and corneal cells on the surface. 
the lining mucosa is also similar but as you can see there are some differences in the lining mucosa the polyhedral cells are tightly packed and do not show any intracellular bridges the granular cell layer is also absent here the surface layer of cells are non keratinized and contain nuclei on the other hand the cells on the surface layer of masticatory mucosa show keratinization and do not contain any nucleus the basal layer the cells of the basal layer are least differentiated they contain the typical cellular organelles synthesize dna and undergo mitosis providing new cells they are of two types progenitor and maturing progenitor cells consist of stem cells they give rise to the maturing cells maturing cells are the basic cells of stratified squamous epithelium the keratinocytes and contain keratin next cell layer is the prickle cell layer when the tissue is being fixed and processed for study the cells of this layer shrink a little bit but they retain the intercellular attachment by means of desmosomes and remain tightly bound to the adjacent cells and these connections look like spines or prickles due to this appearance they are called as prickle or spinous cells next is the granular cell layer it is called so due to the presence of granules in the cytoplasm these are thought to be keratohyalin which is a precursor of keratin some of these granules are also present in the stratum spinosum these granules progressively become larger as they move from the stratum spinosum towards the stratum corneum they expand in size convert keratin tono filaments into a homogeneous keratin matrix and promote dehydration of the cell this leads to the formation of keratinized or corneal layer these are the cells which have the potential to divide these cells of the basal layer divide and differentiate to form the prickle cell layer they mature and change to the granular cell layer these cells become flatter with aging forming the corneal layer on the surface this is shed off due to abrasion and masticatory forces the rate at which the basal layer divides is equal to the rate of shedding off at the surface thus cell formation is equal to cell destruction this leads to the epithelium with a constant width this process of cell maturation is same in the lining mucosa so the cells of the basal layer can form two types of epithelium keratinized epithelium and non keratinized epithelium Keratins are long fibrous proteins present in the cytoplasm of the keratinocytes. As the keratinocytes mature, they are pushed superficially and also get filled up with keratin. But during this process, they receive less nutrients since the epithelium is avascular. The keratinocytes that ultimately reach the surface are therefore dead, but completely full of the protein keratin. The keratin fibers are cross-linked to each other and to desmosomes which help to anchor the dead cells together. Desmosomes comes from the Greek word desmo which means bond and soma means body. So desmosomes are specialized adhesive protein complexes that hold the cells together. Keratinization occurs in masticatory mucosa which is subject to irritation and a lot of abrasion. the keratinocytes that reach the surface are non vital so it is right for them to not contain nuclei which is required for functioning of the cell and such epithelium is said to be ortho keratinized ortho means straight right or correct ortho keratinized epithelium is seen in the heart palate we can remember this term by imagining the nucleus being thrown out of the cell Sometimes keratinization is incomplete and the cells retain remnants of nuclei and other organelles to one side of the cell and such epithelium is said to be para keratinized para means at or to one side of example gingiva has para keratinized epithelium the specialized mucosa on the lingual papillae on the dorsal surface of the tongue is also keratinized
in both keratinized and non keratinized epithelium there are few of these cells which are common these are the non keratinocytes you can watch my video on non keratinocytes for more information about them apart from keratinocytes and non keratinocytes there are few inflammatory cells also present occasionally in the oral epithelium coming back to the histology of the mucous membrane let us split it into the epithelial part and the connective tissue part to understand it better when you look at the epithelium it seems to be dropping down as waves into the connective tissue and these are called the rate ridges or rate pegs the connective tissue on the other hand seems to be projecting up into the epithelium and these are called the connective tissue papillae this helps to increase the surface area of contact between the epithelium and connective tissue which helps to scatter masticatory forces and also form a mechanical interlock certain pathological conditions can cause the rate ridges to either become flat or more pronounced Masticatory mucosa has rubbery surface texture and is resilient because interface between the epithelium and the lamina propria has pronounced rate ridges and connective tissue papillae the submucosa is extremely thin or absent and this makes the tissue firm whereas the lining mucosa has a soft and moist surface can be stretched and compressed acts as a cushion for the underlying structures because the interface between the epithelium and the lamina propria is smoother elastic fibers are also present in the lamina propria submucosa is also present which allows compression and movement needed during speech mastication and swallowing the clinical significance is that it is easier to inject local anesthesia with less discomfort into lining mucosa than masticatory mucosa the drugs also diffuse easily but surgical incisions in the lining tissue may need to be sutured for closure infections in the lining mucosa can also spread fast that's all for this video thank you for watching do leave a comment give this video a thumbs up share and if you enjoy this video want to hear from me again be sure to hit that subscribe button You can also click on any of these links given here to watch a video of your choice.